I always say the proof is in the print. And so I made a print of a recent post that I did here on Fisher Revolution, where there seems to be a lot of confusion about uh, some aspects of the video. Um, I'm basing this on the comments that I'm seeing. Uh, in the image, in the video, I was comparing a 50 megapixel Fuji GFX as a single shot, as a 16 shot multi-pixel shift image, and then taking that single shot and using a interpolation software by Topaz, upsampling it to the same resolution and file size as the 16 stitched image would be, the pixel shift image. And a lot of people, uh, I think, were confused because on some of the zoom-ins that I did, I was really zooming in, and I mentioned that in the video, um, that I'm zooming beyond what I think is really necessary, but I was trying to show you really just how tight everything in both examples held up at that high of magnification. But you have to understand that that wasn't at 100%. That zoom magnification was more like three and 400%, and especially in the very last section that I did. So that's something that's not gonna print at the scale that we have the image. So what I did is I went to the studio, fired up my Epson P9000, broke out some great matte surface paper, and the actual file size of the Multi-Shot 16, as well as the Topaz interpolated file, is like 33 by 43 inches at 360 DPI. So it's a nice size print. I chose a six and a half by 10 inch area. It was that sign that was so controversial in the video and I printed it side by side and I'm going to show it to you in just a second um, but what's interesting and I always say this is why I say the proof is in the print is that when you're pixel peeping the way we were in that video very little of that is going to be discernible on any paper and if there is a difference, let's say there's a 10 or 15% difference between the two, in my experience, once you bring the variables of ink and paper into play, that gets much, much, much smaller, that difference between the two. And that's what has bore out in the prints that I made. I've showed it to a variety of different photographers and artists that I know, not telling them which image is which. And all of them, for the most part, in the very beginning go, uh, I can't tell the difference, or the difference is so subtle. Some very skilled photographers and cinematographers that I've showed it to have noticed after a few minutes of looking some of the very, very fine micro details. And if you were to take the full size print and view it at a proper viewing distance, which is about 54 inches away, it's the diagonal of the actual image, it's sort of an ideal viewing distance, you would realize that you really can't see a difference. It's only when you put your nose right to the paper. And even then, as I said, the difference is so subtle. So let me show you the print right now. All right, so in this first little session here, here are the two images side by side. You know, I'm not gonna say which one is which, but what you can see at this distance, the micro detail that I was talking about in those zooms and in this post, are not gonna be visible to the human eye. I mean, I can make out the texture and stuff here, standing here looking at it, but it's a long ways away. And one thing I think is also important to note is that this is the actual sign that was photographed in the shot. And as you can see, if I turn it in the light, there is a lot of texture on this sign, an awful lot of texture that, you know, that's what I was talking about is the dimensional quality. I want to feel and see this texture and not have it look flat. All right, here we are about 25 inches away from both of the prints. And as you can see, even at this distance, it's really hard to tell which image is which. I think the bottom image is a little bit more open. The top image is a little bit muddier. Those two images could be processed 10 million different ways if you wanted. But again, at this close and at this magnification, you're not seeing what we were seeing in the first video where I was zoomed in so much. Let's go even a little closer now on each image individually. All right, now once again, here we are looking at the top image. We're really at this point only about eight inches away. Um, and it looks really good. And it doesn't, it feels smooth, it's clean. I Once again, I think the top image is a little bit more compressed and muddier feeling, but it looks really nice. Now let's take a look at the bottom image. Here's the bottom image. As you can see, I think it looks absolutely amazing as well, but I do think it's a little bit more open. It's a little bit brighter. Um, the sharpness in both of them are quite good. The bottom image does have a little more sharpness of micro clarity. That's been something that everybody's looked at and everybody has liked it when they saw the actual print. Let's step back now and I'll show you the two again, once again, so you can see them in one frame.
Here we are once again, zoomed back out, looking at the two images. Drum roll, please. Okay, the top image is the multi-shot 16. The bottom image is the uh, single shot using Topaz to interpolate. And as you can see, and as I was trying to point out, the differences are so subtle that everybody that I've showed this to, at, at first glance, were really sort of like they're the same. And then once they looked a little more, the bottom image was always everybody's preference, but it was only by a little bit. So why do I think this is important? Um, this just gives you and I as photographers more flexibility. And that's what I'm all about when I make my work. If you like doing multi-shot images and stitching them together and doing multiple versions, hey, great, keep doing it. But what this shows is that it is possible with good interpolation software in 2024 to take a single image and upsample it and get a quality that's really quite good. Now, if you don't like it, that's fine, but it is a very viable solution. Um, but it's important to also understand that when you're using programs like Topaz, um, and I'm gonna do a whole review of that program, I purchased it, I might as well. Um, and I've used a lot of different interpolation softwares over the years. You can't just use a set formula. Um, they have like a lot of different choices and on how the image is gonna be interpolated. And a lot of that is based upon what is the quality of the image coming in? Is it film? Is it digital? Um, is it a graphic design? I mean, how complex the image is? So you have to have sort of a recipe and a formula for the particular work that you're doing. And that requires just a little bit of testing. So I hope this video has cleared up any confusion that there may have been. And again, as I always say, experimentation is key. You have to run your own test to determine what works for you. But as I said in the beginning, the proof is always in the print. Thank you very much for listening. I can't wait to hear your thoughts. Now go shoot some film.